yeah, it was all of a sudden, really. Um, I woke up, it was a pre-season game uh, just before the 2018-19 season. And I just had discovered a lump at the base of my neck. Obviously not thinking about it because I'd never been through anything like it before. Um, you know, I just went about my day, preparation before the game was all normal. Obviously, you know, it was abnormal to have that. Um, saw the physio, he just said, look, we've got to get through the game, whatever. We don't, not get through the game, but we'll have a look at it after the game. You know, the doc will come in and, and assess. Um, and that's how it all came about, really, just so that suddenly. The doc assessed it. Obviously being a Saturday, uh, yeah, Saturday, nothing was open for, for me to get scans or anything like that. So I had to wait till Monday. Um, actually that night, I flew back for my best mate's 21st in Adelaide. So I traveled from Newcastle to Adelaide, you know, had a really good night, enjoyed myself, saw my friends and family for a, who I haven't seen for, you know, a couple months. Um, enjoyed myself thoroughly there and then came back. And then the following Monday was just straight into uh, first it was an ultrasound, and then it was a CAT scan, and then it was an MRI. Um, oh, there was a biopsy before the CAT scan. So it was all a pretty fast process, you know. Obviously it was not normal for me to have this, and obviously there was red, like red alerts, you know, once they had took the biopsy and all that sort of stuff. So from the first scan, I'd say give it about 10 days, I was already in the operating theatre. I was, it was probably day four, maybe I just finished a CAT scan and I spoke to the, one of the doctors that was working with the club. He was also a psychologist um, and a counsellor as well. So he was, he was there for me. His, his name's uh, O'Neill Maharaj. Um, you know, he took me out for coffee. He said, look, this is obviously something that we don't know until we get, we further investigate. So it'd probably be wise to get your parents up uh, mum or dad or both, you know. And then that's when sort of mum came up and then once all the scans were completed, with, they got all the results. I sat in the surgeon's room and obviously I didn't know what he was gonna say. Um, and then once we sat down, he told me that I had cancer. Um, yeah, I had mum by my side crying and I was sort of like just a bit numb and didn't really know what to think, you know. All I could just really remember from that period was just the white floor. <laughs> I think it all hit me uh, real quickly uh, in terms of like, I couldn't really think much. Obviously, it's not something you want to hear every day. So my thought process was really blurry and, you know, Maybe a bit older, like how, I, how old I am today, you know, 25 in a couple of weeks. I think I would have taken her on a little bit more in a mature way. I was still 20 years old, so I think it was a bit mature, but obviously there was learning experiences from it, you know. Um, but no, the surgeon and, and all the doctors involved and my count, the, the counsellor, you know, doctor, uh, a part of the Jets, really took me through each step of the process. and. Um, yeah, I was in good hands, you know. I had uh, the backing of my, my parents, the team, uh, my friends and family back in Adelaide, you know, I had the faith, my faith in God as well, that really took me along and put me in a mindset where, you know, everything happens for a reason and then everything will be okay in the end of the day. It was just surgery that I believe went for about four or five hours and then, um, I was in hospital for about two weeks. Uh, I think there was just drainage. Uh, there was tubes like we're just around the base of my neck draining the excess blood. And they had to wait for that to all drain out until I was discharged. And then I think, I'm gonna say about three months later, I had to go on an ionized diet, which was like no salt um, for about two weeks to get that uh, really low so I could have a treatment of radiotherapy which was just a small little pill um, you know to kill off any other cancer cells that were still left within my body um, and then once I had done that 
that was that was it for everything. Obviously, they're followed by you know three month blood checks and um, neck checks with the endocrinologist every six months, and then over the time, it's gotten bigger periods. Well, it was funny because <laughs> it was funny because like I had done it because it was a two week pit, like process, so I had done it, and then we couldn't do that f on that date. I don't know why, because I was actually playing then. I was back playing. So we went away for a trip and I said, okay, well, can we delay it another you know, two weeks? So I had to do four weeks of an ionized diet, a low ionized diet. It was like plain chicken salad, that was it, rice. No sauces, anything like, because you get things off the shelf and you look, you, I actually had to look at how much salt it contained. And it had to be zero. So it was... It's just about everything has, almost everything. Everything has salt in it, exactly. Yeah, I think there always is a, an awareness now. I think it's really important um, because, you know, I see it with my friends and family and even teammates. They see something out of the ordinary and it's like, ah, you know, it'll be all right. It'll, it'll pass or it's nothing serious. It's only assumptions. Until they actually get what they're dealing with professionally checked, then they're certain. But with me, like obviously throughout the years, I've gotten more mature. The clarity is the best thing. Whether, because you can get stuck into your mind. You, you can be trapped within just assuming what it could be. So the best thing is just to is just to like, clarify what is, is going on. As cliche as it is, like I, you, you do not take the small things for granted because life can change very quickly all of a sudden. And the people around you, uh, yourself, just, it just all changes. No matter like how close people you th think you are like to some people, it's, it, it definitely does change. Um, but yeah, I mean, everything does happen for a reason. I mentioned it before and everything that does happen has a good side to it or it can have a bad side to it. So it, it all depends and only time will tell what those good things are and what those bad things are. I don't really want to get too technical and stuff like that. I think it's just, you can't be too brave. Obviously, you want to be brave in front of some people because, you know, as a man, you, you need to show that you are secure in yourself and, and all that sort of stuff and not be, you know, vulnerable to these things. But even if it is a check by yourself, you know, or to a loved one to make sure, you know, that you have someone there by your side, depending on who you are and how you take things on board and if you need someone by your side, you're never too brave to, to know your own body. Thank you.